So, so far we have taken some examples and talked about the quality. Now let's see this bad boy in action. I am going to switch to Zivit Studio, uh, which is our GUI, graphic user interface. So you get this uh, when you install our SDK, which is free of cost and then available online. And once you install our SDK, the Civit Studio should be readily available to you. And our cameras are really plug and play. So these are factory calibrated cameras, which means you have you never have to worry about the calibration. We do this before we send this send the cameras to the customers. And what happens in this is basically in this particular software, you can visualize the data as you go. So I will show you a live example as well, but this is very easy to figure out what kind of settings you want to use, what kind of filters you want to use, and you can read all about uh, these things on our knowledge base uh, on our website, civit.com. Or you can just go to help.civit.com and just see all of, uh, read all about what these filters and these uh, settings are actually doing. So like I said, it's as simple as plug and play. I will just show you, I will just take an image, single image, according to these default settings that come when you open Zivit Studio. So now if I go into the basic scene, this is the point cloud that is with color. And the color uh, uh, basically ratio is one to one uh, to the point cloud. So you get two, two true colors in each point of the data, XYZ and RGB. And if we can rotate it, we can see that this high dynamic range uh, scene where you have black boxes, uh, even the plastic wrap pasta, which is really good, you're getting data on all of it. And an easier way to visualize this is if I switch off the color. And there you go. And here is the result with no noise, no ghost points, and additionally, covering all the objects as they actually are in reality. So imagine what you can do with this kind of data. So this is just a manual feature which, where you can use the single to capture the images. But we have also introduced what we call assisted mode. In this mode, you can just particularly set what kind of time you want to set for this capture or how much you want to allow this. And you just press analyze and capture and it takes as many images as possible in that and gives you the best quality data over the whole range of contrast uh, spectrum. So let's say if I set 0.0, six settings for the scene and I press analyze and capture. Now the camera is taking images and it just automatically spits out some recommended settings within this time frame. So these settings you can use manual feature to kind of um, manipulate on your own if you wish to, but you can also use this assisted mode both in Zivit Studio, Argui, or SDK. And now we can see that the data presented by this mode is really, really good and you get all the settings. Uh, one thing here is that sometimes you might not need as many acquisition settings as are given here. So what you can basically do is that once you have used the assisted mode, you can switch back to the manual mode and then you have the option to kind of switch on and off the acquisitions that you want and don't want. So let's say I switch off three and four and now this single button turned into HDR, the high dynamic range that I presented in, the, in my uh, presentation as well. And what this means is basically the camera will take one image with these settings and one image with these settings and it will automatically combine these for you in one scene so you don't have to do any hefty task in order to combine these things you can just automatically get these in the point cloud now if i press the hdr feature it takes two images and now we can see the data is still pretty good but the easy way to see would be here. Now the black background is not covered so much because we have switched off probably the exposure time and the aperture that was enabling the black data to be covered. And we can also see that this particular black box is not very clear. Now what happens if I switch on one more? We start getting data a little bit more. And here we go. Now we have a lot more data. And even without the fourth acquisition setting, with, with just within these three frames and this time, uh, this time limit, I can still get the whole bin to be scanned. And this is what you can visualize with Zibit Studio and you can perform all these functions in SDK as well. And additionally, you have the option to manipulate the uh, filters. We have different kind of filters here, which you can see they are removing or correcting noise in some way. The reflection filter is very popular because it enables us to kind of, uh, to scan the metallic objects with very high precision and very qu uh, good quality of data. And I will give you an example of the metallic bin as well. Let me just switch the scene quickly. So 
so now let's uh, I think delete all of this so we can uh, assess the mode. Okay, so now I'm going to give this 0 0.5 seconds, half a second, to analyze and capture the new scene. And now when I press this, in this 0 0.5 seconds, we will get data on all the metallic objects that are randomly placed into the bin. And there we go. One thing to notice here is basically that not only you are able to get data on these parts with the exact shape, uh, uh, this is um, actually not the, the previous bin was the standard 60 by 40 industrial bin. And this is a smaller bin that we have seen very commonly in automotive industry for assembly and picking applications where they have these nuts and bolts and small parts into these small bins. So I just wanted to give you an example of that. And here, if I switch off the basically color, we can see that all the shapes and all the data is very, very good. And one thing that I am really proud of here is actually these are some metallic uh, uh, nuts and bolts in a plastic wrapped bag. And if we switch off the color, we can even see that and the data inside. So since we're using white light technology to project fringe patterns, we can't really scan a glass, so to say, or a transparent object. But in e-commerce industry and in logistics and warehouse industry, we see that uh, objects are packed in these plastic bags. And that is not a problem because we can get data on these parts as well. And you can see that the coverage is pretty good. And if I increase the time, I can most likely get more coverage on this as well. But these are very shiny and reflective parts. So we also have to understand that we, if we give it very long exposure times, that will also produce some sort of reflections, but that we can take care of in our SDK by using and turning on and off reflection and contrast distortion filters. So here's the bin, and here is your data on all the parts that are possible. Just to give you an idea, this is the 2D uh, image of the same bin. And you can see what parts I am trying to scan here. And I only gave it 0 0.8 seconds, and I can go even down if needed. If it was only one, uh, one sort of part in the bin, it would not take this much time. Like I showed you in the presentation, it can go up to like 300 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, depending on the part. And if we see the 3D data, we are getting all of the data on each of the part with the defined definition. And this is what we claim, and this is what we are proud of in Zavid for producing this. So yes, this is just a quick introduction on how the high quality of uh, 3D data in vision system uh, impacts VGR applications. I particularly took pick and place applications because uh, they are very common and a, a lot of the people are requesting us to talk about that. And, but the high quality of data that is given by Zivit cameras, you can use for any VGR application that you wish for, depending your specs, spec requirement is the same as we provide.